video so just woke up from my nap and honestly i'm pretty tired right now but let's talk about some spread stuff because it's pretty important a lot of you guys have dm me on discord by the way check that out it's completely free it's in the description below click on it it's super fun and let's talk about the misconception of spreads how do you make these spreads what should i know about them before i start so first things first is the negative buying power a ton of you guys actually let your spreads expire throughout the weekend. And we all know that what happens is you do have this really crazy high negative buying power just for no reason. Keep in mind spreads, the beauty of them is you won't really get a sign. On Robinhood specifically, your max loss is just gonna be the money that you put up up front. You're not gonna be seeing like a huge negative half a million number. I've seen some of you guys that have been doing some Amazon spreads. You guys have like negative 1.5 million buying power. That is not true. Keep in mind that don't panic if you let your spreads expire throughout the weekend and you see a huge negative buying power. It will reset back to normal Monday pre-market. So. Don't worry about it. And keep in mind that if you don't want to see this really crazy negative buying power, just close your spreads like a couple minutes before expiration. Just do that. And you don't have to look at this hideous number throughout the weekend. And I really wish that Robinhood actually fixed this problem because it's causing a lot of headache for a lot of newbies. A lot of people that just start doing spreads, they really do freak out when they see like negative 55,000 buying power for virtually no reason just because they do spreads. And it's like a really bad first impression. So let's talk about spreads right now and the call debit spread and what's it about. Remember, this is a nice comprehensive video about spreads and the differences between debit and credit spreads. So the thing about debit spreads is it's also called the poor man's calls and puts because a lot of people can't really afford to pay 200, 100, even $1,000 for a single call or a single put option. So what do they do? They just simply create a put debit spread or they create a call debit spread and you only have to pay a fraction of the price. It's kind of like, you know how you could go on Robinhood and buy stocks at a fractional share, whatever it is, so you could buy like 10% of Apple. Well, debit spreads essentially is buying fractional shares of options, except you do have some perks, including you're not really affected by time decay and you're not affected by implied volatility. The downsides are your gains are capped, which honestly, the gains are very, very generous at around 30 to 200%, which is really, really good. Just invest passively. Remember, you win way more when you play spreads. So with this call debit spread, essentially you do have to sell a call, which is gonna be the one above, and then you're gonna buy a call right underneath it, right here. And you can see our total cost that we have to pay out is $44. Remember, with this call debit spread, your max loss is gonna be $44, the money that you pay up front. When you wanna close a debit spread on Robinhood, they will tell you, would you want to receive a credit or a debit? If you're closing a debit spread on Robinhood, click credit because you want to receive some money back. And your max gain for this debit spread is gonna be the difference between two strikes. 86 minus 85 is a dollar, a dollar times 100, which options to buy 100 shares is $100. So $100 minus 44, your max gain is $56. Once again, your max gain is the difference between the strikes. You do some easy subtraction, you times 100, and then minus the total cost that you paid for it, and you get your max gain. So essentially, if you let this debit spread win, you will be getting about over 100% gain. You turn 44 bucks to almost $100. That's pretty sweet. The only way to win is on expiration 4 p.m. August 14th. The share price of AMD goes from $84 above your sell call of $86. If it's like $86 or $86.01, you get max gain, and that's pretty chill. If it's in between the two strikes, it's kind of fuzzy. Remember, each penny that the share price is below $86 is gonna be $1 from your max gain, and eventually you will lose all your money. The closer you get to 85, the more money that you lose, and once you get around the 85, $85.30 region, you eventually just lose all your money. You go to zero. If you're below $85, tough luck, it's already zero bucks and you lose all your money, which is simply just $44. Now, if you win your spread, if you lose your spread, if you partially win your spread and it expires you know, somewhat in the money and you're holding it through the weekend, 
remember, you will be seeing this really crazy negative buying power. So don't freak out. If you don't want to see this, just close it early. Now, same thing with put debit spreads. It's the exact same thing. You pretty much buy a put that's the closest to the share price. And then right under that, you will be selling a put right under your buy put. And that essentially creates a put debit spread. So definitely jot down your notes. You can see the total cost is $42. So here's what this means. Essentially, you want AMD to drop below your sell put. You want it to drop to $83 or below. And then you get your max gain. Same thing. You take the difference between two strikes, which is one, one times 100. 100 minus $42 is around $58. Your max gain is 58 bucks, which is about 120% gain. That's pretty sweet. Remember, spreads, you win way more when you play them, especially how you don't have to bother with you know, implied volatility and you don't have to bother with time decay. Remember when you're simply buying calls or when you're simply buying puts, you will be losing a lot of your money from the time decay alone. If AMD, for example, it drops to $82 and it just hovers at $82 for days and days. If you buy puts, you will be losing money because every day it opens, the price goes down. But if you have spreads, you're fine if the market is completely flat and you're you know in the money. So these are the beauty of spreads. You do make a lot of money. Remember, the thing about debit spreads is you want your stock price to hit a certain area. That is a debit spread. Now, a credit spread, on the other hand, is a little bit different because it's the complete opposite. A call credit spreads mean you're really bearish on the position. Credit spreads mean you don't want the stock to hit a certain level. Debit spreads, you want the stock to hit a certain level. You kind of get the idea right there. And also, call debit spread means you're very bullish. Put debit spreads means you're really bearish. Call credit spreads means you're really bearish. And then you got a put credit spread, which means you're really bullish. You get the idea. It's a little bit complicated. You may have to watch this a couple of times. I don't blame you. When I first started, this was pretty crazy. So with call credit spreads, you can see I already made one right here. You essentially buy a call on the top and then you sell a call right underneath it. And essentially you're betting that the stock price will not be hitting your buy call. So you're a pretty big bear and you don't want the stock price to hit a certain amount. So you're hoping that the stock price just goes up a little bit, stays the same or goes down. And once again, for these call credit spreads, if you wanna close them, Robinhood might ask you if you're going for a credit or a debit. You wanna click a debit. So it's a complete opposite of what you're doing. So let's click continue. Let's click one. Let's review the order. Remember, call credit spreads and put credit spreads. It's very simple. They just tell you what the money they give you and what's the collateral they gotta put down. So remember, if you get this filled, you immediately get $31 to your buying power. So you right away, you make, a thir you make 31 bucks, but you're obligated to put $100 down as collateral. So here's the catch. If AMD on expiration date at $84, if it doesn't hit $87, congratulations. You obviously still get to keep your minimum credit of $31 and you get your $100 of collateral back. But what happens if AMD, you know, it goes down, it goes down to $83. It's fine, I mean, $83 is right below $87. So you get your collateral back. And obviously minimum credit, you get to keep it forever no matter what. But what happens if AMD goes above $87? Well, you will be seeing a huge shock to your collateral. If AMD, for example, goes to $89, you lose all $100 of your collateral, but you still get to keep your minimum credit because they give it to you up front. Remember, for each penny that it goes above $87 is a dollar knocked off of your collateral. So this is pretty dangerous. You kind of get the idea and your break even point is essentially gonna be your minimum credit and the overall value. So if the share price of AMD goes up to $87.31, you essentially break even and they release back the $100 of collateral because you just used up your minimum credit to pay for that slight loss. Do you kind of get it? Remember, every penny that goes above $87 is a dollar knocked off for collateral. So it's a little bit complex, but you will get the hang of it eventually once you start doing them. Remember, the best way to play options is to actually go down and dirty on them. Stop reading the books, you know, stop watching a ton of different videos. I mean, definitely watch them, definitely read the books, but you gotta get down and dirty in the options market. You gotta try these yourself to really get the hang of it. 
So put credit spreads means you're really bullish. You don't want the stock to drop down to the price that you selected. You kind of get the idea. Credit spreads means you don't want them to go down or go up to a certain point. Like you want there to be like a ceiling level. Essentially, you're really hoping that the stock just stays flat. That's the best way to do things. And if you check this out to create a put credit spread, you buy a put underneath it and then you sell a put right above it. And our total credit is 35 bucks. Let's click one. Let's see what our collateral is. Our collateral is most likely gonna be $100. I guessed it correctly. So your max loss, once again, is gonna be the collateral minus minimum credit, it's $65. It's not too bad. I mean, you're risking like a small amount of money. You could make about 35%. That's pretty awesome, especially in one week's time. So if AMD at $84 for this put credit spread is above $83, which is our sell put, we essentially get our collateral back and we still get to keep the minimum credit. If it's above, you know, 85, it goes to 86, if it goes to 87, you get your collateral back and you get your minimum credit of 35 bucks. If it dips below $83, every penny that goes down, knock off a dollar from your collateral. Eventually, when it hits $32, you lose all your collateral, but hey, at least you still have your minimum credit. So you get the idea. Spreads are essentially pretty safe because you're just betting on the share price trying to stay flat. The cool thing about spreads is you know exactly how much money you make, how much money you will lose, and what you could expect in the future. It's pretty awesome. Like It's one of the few strategies in the options market where they actually tell you how much cash you can make and what is the risk. If you straight up buy a call or put, you're basically playing roulette and you're hoping that the you know option price goes up. It's pretty complicated. Put credit spreads, call credit spreads, debit spreads, they're cookie cutter, they tell you what's up, and they give you a good time. Remember, a lot of these strategies, especially the spreads, please pick something super stable like Bank of America. That's one of the most stable stocks out of their play. Pick something super stable like Microsoft. You can see there's barely any movement. And also the small cap is a phenomenal example. It's pretty flat as well. And it's also a really good example to play spreads. And also if you let your spreads expire and pretty much you're holding them through the weekend, once again, you will be seeing a huge negative buying power. Don't freak out about it. It will reset on Monday. Once again, if things really do get kind of weird for you over the weekend, like if your buying power, you know, I don't know, turns like blue, you should probably email the Robinhood Custom Support Team. But of course, this is a quick little introduction of spreads. They're honestly the best way to do options. A lot of you guys have posted screenshots of your gains on the Discord server. I saw a lot of you guys play spreads. And a lot of you guys have been making a ton of cash. That's about it. Thanks for watching.